In my statistics classes, I use and rely on the standard normal distribution table or the z-score table heavily um, to teach the class and to find, you know, p-values that match certain z-scores that we find in our calculations or find z-scores uh, with a given p-value. Now, if you don't have a table handy and all you have is a calculator, uh, let me show you how to do this with a TI Inspire. The TI 83 and 84 have these same commands in the same places in their menus. Uh, I believe, unless the has changed with the new software, you just don't get the sort of wizard that we're going to see to help you guide th you through the proper syntax, but they do use the same syntax in these commands. That means that's you know how you type them into your calculator. So let's take a z-score value of 2 and find the area to the left and the right of that, uh, of that, of that z-score. And remember, the unit of measure for z-scores is the number of standard deviations your statistic is away from the mean. So we're going to hit this button right here, and this will toggle through the scratch pad whether we're graphing or using a calculator. And you can, of course, start a new document with a calculator pad, uh, page on it as well. We're going to select Menu, go to Statistics, select Distributions, and we are looking to go from a z-score to a p-value. We're looking for normal CDF. Now, with a TI Inspire, you can decide whether to shade to the left or the right. I believe, and I haven't used one in a while, so please forgive me, but I believe on an 83 and 84, you're only going to be able to shade this to the left. Uh, maybe if someone is... Uh, comfortable using these calculators, you can either verify my statement or uh, add something to the comment to say, no, you can shade left to right. So we have a lower bound of negative infinity, and an upper bound, we're going to do a z-score value of 2. Uh, we're doing that for a couple of reasons. We might know the uh, empirical rule, which is 68, 99.7, and it says, you know, you have 68% of your data roughly within one standard deviation to the left and right of the mean. 95% of your data within two standard deviations left to right of the mean, and then 99.7% of your data within three standard deviations to the left and right of the mean. Now, if we have a z-score value of 2, then we should be expecting about 95% of our data to be within two standard deviations of the mean. So, with an upper bound of 2, we should be expecting an upper tail area of half of what's left on the outside, or half of 5%, or a tail area of somewhere roughly around 0.025. Now, of course, that empirical rule is rounded off as well. Let's not forget that the standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, and if we're just trying to find a z-score, we don't want to change those values and hit OK. So the calculator is telling me from negative infinity on the, z on the uh, number line all the way up to a value of 2, and this would be a z-score value of 2, the area to the left is 0.97725. Now, we can take that area and subtract it from 1 and find the area of the upper tail, or uh, with the Inspire, we can do Menu, Statistics, Distribution, Shade, uh, or Normal CDF, and this time we can do a lower bound of 2 and an upper bound of Infinity. We'll have to go down here where the Pi button is, select Infinity, and keep that mean and standard deviation of 1 for the standard normal distribution, and we'll get an upper tail area of 0.02275, which is, you know, close to what we expected uh, with our understanding of the empirical rule. Plus 1 minus 0.97725, of course, is that upper tail area of 0.02275. Let's also not forget that the bell curve is perfectly normal, so if we wanted to find the area to the left of negative 2, we should have the same lower tail area. So let's do menu, statistics, distributions, normal CDF, and this time let's do that lower, let's see it's going to default to shade to the left, that lower bound of negative infinity, and let's go up to negative 2. So negative 2, hit uh, enter or OK, and there's our lower tail area, the area to the left of a z-score of negative 2 is 0.02275, just like we expected. Now, if you have the p-value and you'd like to know the z-score that goes along with it, and again, you don't have the table to read backwards, we're going to do Menu, Statistics, uh, Distribution again, and we're doing Inverse Normal. So Inverse Normal, it's going to ask for the area, and this is the area to the left of the z-score that you're looking for. Uh, the the p-values that we're getting was 0.97725 to be to the left of uh, 
that z score of 2. So let's do an area of 0.97725, get that matching p value that we just found, and we are expecting a z score of 2. Bam, there it is. Let's do one more time menu statistics distributions inverse norm. Let's do that lower tail area of 0 0.02275. This time we should get a z score of negative 2, and voila, there it is. So that's how you use your TI Inspire. Uh, and again, these calculator commands of inverse norm, norm CDF, these calculator commands you can find in your T83 and T84 as well. You just have to make sure that you write down the um, syntax for those and get it correct for your calculator. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.